industrial rustic, just thrown together kind of thing. Like eight of us living on this street in Brooklyn. You won't be able to find another one of these. It was handmade, uh, a little box to hold all my stuff. Things that became more important to me, I put my energy towards. My name is Mike, uh, Mikey, uh, as a lot of people know me on Instagram. Uh, this is my 2001 Chevy Express 3500 uh, 14 foot box truck. And uh, why don't I just give you a quick tour around and show you what's going on. So this is my kitchen area. A lot of the magic happens here. I love to cook. Uh, this area over here is the sink. As you can kind of tell, it wasn't built specifically for the space, but the way that a lot of the space is designed in here is that when I was building this back in New York, I would have it parked at a friend's house. I'd be driving around the neighborhood and on certain nights, you'd see people throwing out some things that were actually really, still had a lot of life left in them, still very useful. So this is a bathroom unit that I picked up. Uh, somebody was tossing out on Long Island where I'm from. And this piece was also Long Island, just a different area. I only changed a couple of things. I mean, I put a, uh, I did like a SureFlow pump in the back, five gallon catch on the bottom that I can easily remove, and then a six gallon fresh water. So it's not plumbed, you know, through these long lines. I can take that straight out, go fill it up at a supermarket. Uh, this piece was awesome. This didn't have the range in it, obviously. So I cut the hole for that, dropped it in. There's an 11 pound propane tank in there. Um, little extension cord up here if I want to run my coffee maker. I have a 2000 watt inverter as well. So I can run simple appliances, do a lot of cooking up here. The two burner makes it awesome. Before I built the bed when I was back in New York, I actually had nine people in here for Thanksgiving. We used this space a ton. So it was a really good time. I'm also a big fan of just hanging hooks up and having some of the kitchen stuff up there, as long as it's not too much because some of these roads bounce the stuff around. Uh, yeah, but I do a ton of cooking here, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Um, this is just kind of my cathartic release for how I like to spend my time. If I'm a little stressed out, I'll hop over here, cook something up, sit down, eat, and I'm back to back to business. So when we come in through the truck, through the, the pass through, we on the right hand side, we have my area where I have like a little dresser, I have socks and underwear, shirts, uh, shorts, and then this bottom one is just an old laptop, some electronics. Uh, the star of the show here, which I love these things, this is a diesel heater, cheap Chinese one. This was like 140 bucks on Amazon. I just mounted the diesel tank directly to the wall. Uh, it actually is a diesel truck, so I could have just gone ahead and tapped it to the tank, but the way I'm living in it now, I just wanted to get the first six months out of it, see how I felt about the space, because if I need to move that, I don't want to have to replumb the lines. This here is just a kind of a first aid kit, vitamins, medicine cabinet area. Uh, water filtration. I don't actually need to have this, but I like this. It's a 16 or an 18 cup tabletop filter. I get my water from a supermarket. If I bring that six gallon in, I just fill it up there, run it through here. This is just good for fresh water for drinking, uh, for cooking, stuff like that. I have my refrigerator down here, Alpicool 65 liter. It's a T65, so a dual zone. That was a big upgrade from the last van that I had because that one only was a refrigerator. These things are awesome. They run like 45 watts, so almost no power draw as far as a refrigerator goes, uh, but keeps things super cold, freezes them well below freezing. And then up here, this is my super temporary six month light setup. So as I was building out the solar, the power system and everything over there, I went ahead and said, you know, it was getting dark one night and I was asking my buddy who was helping me what we could do for the lights. And we ended up just taking this scrap piece of wood, screwing uh, or cutting a couple of holes in them, dropping these 12 volt lights in, putting it up on a switch and literally screwing it to the wall. That ended up being a really temporary solution that I ended up still having now six months later. I'm going to upgrade my lights, but at the same time, I kind of like the industrial rustic, just thrown together kind of thing. Uh, it's more of my style. So when I think back to why I got started on the road, it's pretty clear to me. There weren't, I mean, I, I had seen a couple of YouTube videos on people living in rigs or camping out of cars or whatever, but I actually had the van that I started this all in well before I started living in it. So I purchased the Dodge to be able to, I was with somebody at the time, we wanted to, we were both in grad school, we wanted to have something to go take um, on little like weekend excursions up to the mountains in New York. We wanted to go to the Adirondacks, to the Catskills, and have some place to stay really close to the trail so that we'd be able to go up the next day. And um, so I went and bought that van on a whim. I drove it for a year or a year and a half, just as a regular car, and then I was finishing up grad school and I was coming out looking at apartments and when I was looking in Brooklyn and Queens and close to Manhattan where I was going to end up, I ended up getting a job, 
I was seeing rents anywhere from $2,600 a month to $3,100, $3,200 a month. And not like big places, a lot of them were 100 years old, like not something I'd be interested in. Uh, not for not at that price. And quite frankly, I didn't want to pay any money. I've always been into hiking, camping. So when it came time to actually start that new job, I took the train in for the first two days. After the first two days, I figured I'll just take the van in for the rest of the week and see if I can just find a place to park and kind of like hang out in the van. And that's really what led me into the whole thing. If I had to say there was one reason, it was just because I didn't want to pay rent and I wasn't ready to buy a house. I didn't like the idea of a mortgage. And I figured if I can do this for maybe two or three months, that would save me enough to have a little bit of a cushion so that I could then go get an apartment and not be completely broke. I spent the first two and a half years of my journey on the road in a 99 Dodge uh, 1500, so a pretty small van. In there, I did not have very much power at all. I had 200 AGM, I had uh, 200 watts of solar, it was just enough. Then I bought an electric bike that was a big suck to charge the battery all the time. So I knew that when I built this system, I wanted to have a much more robust system and I only wanted to do it once. So I spent a little more in terms of buying and uh, building the components than I had originally planned, but it's way more power than I need now. And it allows me to run everything without having to think about it. Also out here in the Southwest where I currently am, it is always sunny, big difference from New York. So let me check, uh, let, me, let me show you what I have going on over there and we'll take a look at the batteries and the, the power setup. So when it comes to the power system, as I mentioned, I wanted to kind of overbuild it. And I would always suggest anybody getting into this, uh, once you learn about what you need, just do like one and a half, two times that. So I had 200 AGM in the last van, uh, absorbed glass mat, which was a deep cycle battery. So you can only discharge at 50%, as I'm sure you know. These are 200 uh, amp hours of lithium, but there's two of them. So they're lithium iron phosphate, two, two of those. So for 400, I have 400 amp hours of lithium. This is by a company called Ampere Time, just a little bit less expensive than some of the bigger players in the market, but to 200 amp rated battery system so I can charge and discharge up to 200 amps. Now that the technical stuff's kind of out of the way, I have 600 watts of solar on the roof. Those are three 200 watt uh, Renogy panels. And then I have a 2000 watt inverter here, pure sine wave that has a couple of extension cords coming off to go to different things around the rig. So I can power the home office, I can power the coffee maker, the kitchen accessories, stuff like that. This was actually a gift to me. So this is a buddy, my buddy Rob gave me a, uh, a security system. I mounted one camera in the front, one camera in the rear, which was important to me because I have a dirt bike in the back now that I wanted to have eyes on you know, from inside. Also, as you may notice, I do not have windows in here, which I actually kind of like. People always call me out about that, but I like not knowing what's going on outside sometimes. And if I check the cameras and I can see what's going on and nobody can see him. Um, I wake up every day and one of the first things I do is just check like what kind of health is the battery in right now. So this is the monitor for the, the, uh, the solar charge controller. It's so hot that the inverter just kicked on there as well. This is the Victron battery monitor. So this is on a smart shunt and that just tells me you know, what the state of the battery is, how many amps I've used, what, how many amp hours I've run through. Um, and there's actually an app on my phone as well that connects to that. And then to supplement when I'm not sitting in one spot, like when I was in the Northeast and I wasn't getting a ton of solar, I'm able to also charge through a DC to DC charger. This is just a, a, a smart or a Orion Victron smart DC to DC. That's a 30 amp charger. So on a sunny day when I'm driving, I can actually get up to 60 amps charge, which is more, more than enough. You know, I really don't need that much. I have a small fuse box down there, which has uh, slots for 12 different accessories. And then I just have a couple of things charging down here on the floor and on the batteries. There's a, a Ryobi power tool set that I keep those charged all the time. A couple of walkies for when you're off grid, especially going to an event or something like that. It's nice to have that connectivity. A um, couple of USB outlets and everything was fused properly. I really took my time to make sure I wasn't going to set my house on fire and I had some expertise in, uh, in a friend who does that professionally. I built it, but I had some help in uh, making sure it wasn't gonna kill me. And this is my high-end, very expensive, you won't be able to find another one of these, it was handmade, uh, a little box to hold all my stuff next to my bed when I'm sleeping. Um, actually, this is just zip ties and a cardboard box because as I was building, I just needed a place to put things temporarily. And as you can see, this kind of trend of, it doesn't matter how it looks to me, very functional, uh, hasn't fallen off the wall yet, and I've done some serious miles. 
So uh, that kind of wraps up the electrical. The only other thing I would say about this is I do work from the road and I know I'm gonna show you that in just a little bit what the desk and office setup looks like, but connectivity is really important to me for internet and not just any level of internet, I need decent speeds. So I have an M1 Nighthawk router on the wall here, which is uh, wired permanently into the power source. So that never turns off. I just took the battery out of it. Then there are two TS9 connectors coming out that go up to antennas on the roof. So anytime I get to a new spot, I'll make sure that the solar's good, I'll make sure everything's running properly, and then I'll check the speeds to make sure that I can work from there for that following work week. I ended up posting something on uh, Reddit about living in different places in, in New York in the van, and uh, I had basically nothing in there. It was just like a fan, and a bed and that was kind of it. No sink set up, nowhere to cook, no uh, batteries or anything like that. And someone messaged me back, his name was Patrick. And Patrick messaged me back and he said, well, there's like eight of us living on the street in Brooklyn. And this ended up becoming what's known as Van Alley, which some people watching this may know some of that crew as well. There's been a couple of videos done of that, uh, on that at this point. And that was almost three years ago. So I met this guy, I lived down there, um, I, I met up with him and the people down there. These guys like all worked full time. For the most part, they were working either full time, part time, just coming back there to hang out, and like they were hanging out on the sidewalk. It was a totally different thing than what it came to, what I came to know it as in the Southwest and most of the country where there's public land. But long story short, I got in it to save some money. Three months in, I decided it was way easier than I thought, and it was a lot more enjoyable than just camping. And it was it was a challenge. So I got into it for financial reasons. Um, I stay in it partly for the financial reasons, but mostly for the challenge and the adventure of what else is out there. And when I say adventure, I don't necessarily mean hitting all the national parks and going to see some incredible, beautiful places. Like, those things don't really do it for me. It's been the people that I've met on the road. The people that I meet, every person that you meet on any given day out here living in this kind of way, is always a window into like another thing you didn't know about or they have a background you haven't heard about or they're just like cool, chill people you can go hiking with and cook with and hang out with. And that's the kind of community that's kept me on the road. So this is the bedroom uh, where the other magic happens. This is a 10 inch memory foam gel mattress. Um, I bought it on Amazon for like 400 bucks. It is a full size mattress, which was a big upgrade over the twin size that I had in the old van. Um, it was just important for me to be able to have a place to hang out with friends. Like sometimes we're hanging out up here, sometimes people are down there and up here, um, or if I have somebody over just to you know watch a movie or whatever. Awesome space. I got a great night's sleep up here as well. Um, memory foam pillow, it's just something that I got into as I got a little bit older. Everything else in the bedroom area was kind of kept more the way the box truck came. So the walls, obviously, these are the original walls. Um, you'll see I have a couple of things up here. Uh, graph paper, which is I did some drawings as I was building out the van or the truck and also have some plans there for future design upgrades and things like that. These license plates are from the old van. I'm actually now a South Dakota resident. So I moved from New York and did all my license and registration out there. That's what those are for. I painted the back door because uh, it was kind of gross when I first got the truck, so that kind of hit all the ugly. And uh, as you can see, I can sit up here. I'm 5'11", and I still have maybe like three, four inches of clearance up here. Um, the reason I built the bed at this height specifically, because it is pretty high up off the ground, and you probably can't see it from that shot, but it's, f I think, 41 inches from the floor up. And that's because I have a toolbox underneath the, f the bed that as I built the bed, I wanted to be able to still open that toolbox up. So it's actually 41 and a half inches to be specific. Um, I can still sit up here with the door closed. On a really hot day, kind of like today, I would be able to also roll that big garage door up. It rolls over my head. So it brings it down, the ceiling down a little bit, but then I can lay in bed, get some work done on my laptop, stare out the, uh, the, wind, you know, the, the open space here into whatever kind of scenic stuff is going on out there. I usually don't do that in a Walmart parking lot because you know, nobody wants to see that. Um, and I just got really lucky. Like during this whole build, I found things as I needed them. So I know I already mentioned that I found a couple of the other components for a few days, I was trying to will into existence actually finding uh, a set of overhead cabinets. And this was pretty important to me because I needed more storage space just so things weren't out all over the place. So I have some storage along the edge of the bed here on the, the bed platform past the mattress. I keep food and such up here, a couple of other cooking uh, utensils and um, some other stuff up there. Uh, 
The bed though itself, and I get a lot of comments on this, the bed itself does not have any middle supports, nothing in the middle of the bed supporting it. It's screwed with massive supports directly to the side and it's anchored in with like 20 screws to the side. So I've actually had five people up here before. So I know it can at least hold about 800 pounds, which is way more than we'll ever be up here. Um, yeah, I get a great night's sleep. I sleep like a baby, whether I'm in a truck stop parking lot or out here in the desert, doesn't really make a difference to me. This space here is uh, where I get all my work done. I work for a you know, standard kind of corporation out of California. It doesn't matter where I get the work done from as long as I get it done. So I made sure that when I built this space out, that it was comfortable enough to sit here for eight hours. Um, you know, the chair, I can fold it up and put it away. It's comfortable enough, it doesn't bother me at all. This area is pretty unique though, because I do have some power running down the wall here. Um, I can set the computer up. I can also lift the monitor up. It's on a swing arm, so I can have my dual monitors here. And I do a lot of phone calls, conference calls, stuff like that. So I have my headset just hanging here. It can get a little bit windy uh, outside sometimes or if I'm in a, a busy area, so I don't want all that background noise. So I got myself a really good headset. Everything stays on all day long, charged up. I have uh, a little drawer here. It's kind of like my junk drawer, office drawer. And then I have these latches to keep everything closed while I'm driving. Another kind of drawer with a whole bunch of odds and ends in there. And then this is really just like a spice, uh, spice rack and uh, kitchen accessory cabinet. This was another piece that I found. So as you're seeing, I like to pick up stuff that people are just kind of tossing and repurpose it. It was in great shape when I found it. I didn't expect to use it this long or for six months at this point, but I screwed all this stuff directly to the wall. Like this is all braced directly into the plywood that's back there. Um, and it's just been great. Um, this was actually two different pieces. I found this white board. This wasn't part of it. I just added some hardware, cut it to size, and it ended up fitting perfectly here. Behind here, I just have some kind of memorabilia, some things from family, friends that they've sent me or pictures they've taken, things like that. I also really like this picture. This picture I found somebody's thrown out in Brooklyn. I found a couple of things on the same day uh, that I have in different parts of the, the truck here. Turns out this is like a $6 picture. Somebody took a Somebody found it online and I thought it was really unique and special and it turns out you could buy that for six bucks on Amazon. So a little disheartening there. Um, but yeah, this is where I, I sit, you know, eight hours a day, 40 hours a week. Um, but it's nice to be able to work comfortably from your home, make a regular salary, which is something a lot of people don't talk about when they live on the road, which I've found really fruitful because I'm still able to make the money that, that allows me to stay on the road and I don't have to have an end date. So uh, that's been working out really well. Desk setup works out really well. Um, no complaints from my end. It's just been great so far. And when I think about my transition in the last three years into growing to who I am now, that has expanded tremendously. And I feel like I wake up every day knowing, I don't want to sound cliche, but knowing like that the person that I am is the person that not only did I want to be, but that I made. And that's not to say other people have not had influence on my life. Actually, people on the road and some people back home have had tremendous influence on my life. But every time I see a new direction I want to take my life in, this lifestyle allows me to do it more fluidly. So I can, I can decide I don't want to be here. I've been in Moab where we're shooting this. I've been here for five weeks. Great place. I don't want to live here my whole life. So I'm going to hop in my car in a couple days and probably drive to Colorado and then end up in the Pacific Northwest. And like that kind of constant renewal of the, the newness and the challenge, like it always brings something else day to day. Like working is not enough to keep me stimulated. It's a great, I have a great job. I don't have any complaints about it. Um, socially, no complaints, but like constantly being stimulated with new things. That was something that I found was very helpful for me to be happy. And I would definitely say like any people, I can only speak from a guy's perspective, but any people that are sitting thinking like, how would I, maybe you're maybe afraid to give up what you have to go after something else. Um, if you know that you have the ability to handle whatever comes at you, then everything else becomes cake. You don't have to worry about running into a situation you can't handle. You know, and now after three years, I'm much more prepared to handle anything that might've come my way. So I've saved a couple of bucks by not having the apartment. You know, when I started, I really didn't have a whole lot of money. It wasn't like I moved, you know, I bought my van for $1,800 when I started the, uh, the first van and I didn't build it at all when I first started. It was just like the bed and the fan. That was pretty much it. Now I have a whole series of tools down here that I can pretty much fix anything on the truck with. Um, you know, I have like six different ways to cook. Uh, I can entertain people in the space, like things that became more important to me, I put my energy towards. 
And that was the biggest transition in my life, is realizing I can put that energy towards things, because frankly, I'm not spending a whole lot of time doing things that I don't want to do anymore. And that was really big. So like, just anybody thinking what's on the other side of, of that veil of maybe being afraid, the whole world's on the other side of it. And if I would have never left New York, I never would have figured that out. And I, New York has a special place in my heart, as do all the people that I love back there. But I'm looking much more towards what else is out there. And that's what keeps me excited. And that's what keeps me on the road. Thanks for checking out my rig. Um, I'm humbled by even the experience of having somebody take an interest in any of this. I know it's not maybe what you've seen elsewhere on the web, but this is how I live and this is the life that I built for myself. So I don't post a ton, but if you want to get in touch or you want to kind of like track where I'm going or what I'm doing, um, I'm on Instagram mostly at vanlife718. And if you're from New York, you might understand that. It's an old area code. You can't get it anymore. Uh, kind of a lame way to a lame reason. But anyway, yeah, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the road.